It all started with a single drop. Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. My name's Leon. I'm a macro photographer from the UK and today we're going to be looking at water droplet photography but not only water droplet photography we're going to be doing creative water droplet photography. I am a creative photographer from the UK like I've already said and I specialize mainly in water drop photography. All my work though is done on budget meaning I believe truly believe that everybody can do the same as what I do. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go through seven of my best tips I have got for water droplet photography. Tip number one, and it's the biggest tip I can offer anybody, and that is camera. A camera is just a tool, that's all it is. The camera takes the pictures, and it's you that sets the camera. So any camera you have can take pictures just as good as anybody else's. It's understanding your camera that makes the perfect picture. So don't think you've got to have the best camera in the world to take the best pictures. This is a Canon, Canon 750D and that is an entry level camera and that is 90% what I take my pictures on. And when I show people, they laugh, but they don't laugh at my pictures. Tip number two. Might not sound a lot, and it might not sound important to some people, but to me, this is a big thing. You do not need the best lenses to start off doing macro photography. When I first started off, all I had was this 18 to 55 mil kit lens that actually came with a camera. What I did was I bought some extension tubes, and all these extension tubes do is go in between the camera lens and the body, and this, was the first thing I had to start my macro photography off and I got great pictures with it. Once I learned, like I said, tip number one, how to use my camera to balance, to get the best out of that. Then I'm gonna say it after a bit, like anything, macro photography come a bug and I did step up. That's where I went to the Canon 100 mil, but the Canon 100 mil wasn't giving me what I really wanted because yet again, I had to keep putting extension tubes on because it's like everything else. When you're small or short and you're trying to reach something, you can't just quite reach that thing. So what you have to do, you have to get a step to stand on to reach something. And that's the same with the macro photography. I found out that with a one-to-one -one macro lens, even though it was ideal and good and I could crop in on things, it wasn't the greatest way to do it. Low was one of the first companies to come out with a two times macro lens. So of course, that just hit the market straight away. And with this affordable lens and the build quality, this has bought my picture on leaps and bounds. But like I said, I started off basic and it become a bug. So that's where I saved up to get me this lens. And that's made a massive, massive difference to my photography. You can now, a lot of people use flashes. I do use flashes when it comes to insect photography. When I do my, my water drop of photography, I like to do longer exposure, meaning that a tripod like this comes in useful. Now you don't have to have the dearest of tripods. The cheapest of tripod does the job. All it is is to just stabilize the picture. That is simple as, and that's what I use, along with my lights. 
So that is tip number two. The first thing I had to learn when I started off was how to get a water droplet to stay on something. This is where I started off using pieces of cotton on just two memo, memo clip holders. I learned that, you know, you couldn't just go straight away and put a drop on it because it just didn't work. This is where you have to learn to build your drops up because what you do is you start off with the smallest drop first and then you add to the water drop, you gradually build the water drop up until you get the size that you want. And that is the best way to start off. Best sort of needles you can use is either a diabetic needle or a proper syringe. The ones with the flat surfaces, they don't work because this one with the point on, the water rolls off the end of it. And what it tends to do is reacts, the water reacts with the metal and rolls off a lot easier, helping you to build your water drops up. This is exactly the same thing when you're doing dandelion for clock photography. You need to build it up because if you just spray it on straight away, what happens is, is the dandelion just falls over flat and you lose it. But this is the best way to start off. And that is, like I said, just build them up because it's all right trying to put a big one on, but it don't work, it just drops off more time. Building it up helps because as you know, Gravity takes its part in everything. And when you start off small, you build up and build up and you get the perfect roundness. If you add too much, you get a bell, like a bow, and then that, your water drop's gonna come off because gravity's took its toll like humans. You know what I mean? The older we get, everything seems to get safe and saggy, but that will work a treat, trust me. Tip number four, what sprays to use? There's two different types of spray I use for my photography. One is just a normal pump spray. And the other one is electronic spray that gives a lovely fine mist out. Depending what sort of picture I want to do and how I want to perceive the picture, I will use, depending the pump spray or the fine spray. When I first started off, I used to use a pump spray and this was brilliant, but it's the same as the tip with a needle. It's all about building the spray up. So when I first started, I was spraying, I was spraying on my dandelion clocks. It was taking either ages or the dandelion clock would fall over. And I was finding to get the best results, I was having to lift the spray right out of the way and pump dead slow and let the mist of the pump spray fall on it. If I got too close, what was happening? It was rocking and it was knocking the dandelions, uh, the water droplets off the dandelion until I came across this little pump spray. This little pump spray is a godsend to me and it's absolutely fantastic because the way it comes out, it really is fine and it helps me yet again to build up the water droplets. And because it's that fine, I can get it fairly close and spray it on like a spray can. And this helps me so much. I can't say enough about how good this water spray actually is. But there's nothing wrong with a pump spray. And this one's just cheap as cheap. This is out of a local pound store. And you get a pack of five for a pound. And they're more ideal to put in your bag if you're mounting about. Because, you know, they're small, compact, a tiny, tiny bit of water. And if you want to add a water droplet or something or spray to make it look shiny, they're absolutely fantastic. Tip number five, lighting. Lighting is more important than the actual subjects. Without light, you ain't gonna take a picture full stop. So I really do concentrate more on light than anything else. And being creative, I use creative lighting myself. This is where I really sort of get deeply involved with my photography. I use so many simple lights. I don't use big setups. I don't believe in them. I use the simplest things that we can all afford. This is a simple set of fairy lights from a local pound store. And these work absolutely fantastic. I can put them as a background. I can shine them onto my backgrounds. I can drape them over my subject. So these really are a unique set of lights, to be fair, what I use. You haven't got to have massive bright lights because like I said at the start, I do longer exposures, meaning sometimes I do a two, 
second, three second, four second exposure to get what I want. The Cosell, really, they're ideal. And what the best thing about them is, them small, I can put them in my bag, them lightweight, and I've always got them there. But my best light and my favorite light is this one. And this is a rotating LED light stand. And this really is a game changer for me. The lights change from blue, green, red. And when it comes to actually making a creative picture, water drop picture, or any macro picture to be fair, this really does make a huge difference. Over a second or two seconds, this gives the light a time to change color. And with my backgrounds, it means them gonna blend in and make the picture. And so I believe that light should have been number one, but this light is absolutely fantastic. And another one, that's a budget light. And many people don't think about them to start off with, but to me, it's been a light saver. Tip number six, getting the perfect background for the picture can be very, very hard, especially being inside. I have used black sheets, I've used black pair specs. They're all good and they all work, but if you want to get really creative, the best thing you can try are these cards. These cards are reflective cards, holographic. And as you can see, they pick the light up absolutely fantastic. And these are the biggest sort of my photography. This, when you see my pictures, my pictures are all used with these. So it gives me the colour. This is why I need my light so good, because I shine, like I said, I shine the light onto the back of my background. It comes onto the background, reflects back into the water droplets, and that's how I get my pictures. I've got hundreds of these cards and I, they've been over the years since I've started have been the one of the best things I ever purchased. I never even thought about it. What it was is I, we had the Christmas presents and the, the Christmas present had some of this paper and it was wrapped holographic paper. And I tore a bit off and I tried it. And what I was doing, I was actually bouncing the flash off it on my water droplet pictures for my dandelions and it was working brilliant because what it was is as it was bouncing off the background it was casting the shadow into the milk where I was using my dandelion and it was actually working as a full background it gave me so much depth of field it was absolutely brilliant so that's one of them I use along with this aluminum foil or silver foil wherever you come from and this again, being shiny, it captures the light, but what I do is I scrumple it up first, and this will give me the light and dark shadows on the pictures, meaning that it's giving your background more character. Giving your background more character also gives your work more meaning, and I think this is the, the, the most, one of the important things, should I say, is your background tells a story. A lot of people do macro photography, and if you notice, when they're doing the wildlife photography, or they're doing insect photography, they always put a piece of white card or blue card back of it. Yeah, you can get the picture of the book, I understand that, but with my pictures, I like to tell a story because it's creative. I like to make it feel spacey, you know, uh, different, spooky, you know, fashionable, bizarre, and I think this is why my pictures stand out so much. Plus, the more bizarre the background, the water drop refracts it, it picks it up, meaning that it gives you a nice water drop on your reflection on your picture. Tip number seven, camera settings. What can I say about camera settings? Everybody's settings is going to be different depending on what light sort they use. This is a major thing. I usually start off somewhere around F8, ISO 100, and then go anything from one fifth of a second straight the way up to two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, depending what sort of look I want in my picture. It's all about trial and error. You can't get it wrong because at the end of the day, you're thinking outside the box and you're being creative. And this is creative photography. 
I have failed a lot in a, a lot of my pictures, but I always get there in the end. Don't give up, try new things. If you see a picture and you think, how oh, can I do that? Try it, experiment. Don't forget, keep as cheap as you can. In today's society, as we know, jobs are going hard, electric going up, gas going up. We still can enjoy our photography. We've got plenty of stuff around the house we can use. And like I says, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you very much to Lower for allowing me to do this video.